Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about crossbody bags. I'm a huge fan of crossbody bags. I didn't used to be, but over the years I've just become more and more attracted to them and now I think there's nothing better than a good crossbody bag. They're so easy and carefree and they're just an essential, I think, in any good bag collection. Um, so I thought I would do a video on all the crossbody bags I have. These aren't all necessarily solely crossbody bags, but all the bags I'm going to talk about say can be worn crossbody. I have 10 here and there is a little bit of overlap between this video and my mini bags ranked video if you watch that but not too much. I think I have four bags that are the same but there are six different ones that I'm going to talk about. These aren't necessarily all the mini bags I have. Um, some of them are slightly bigger um, but the one thing they have in common is that they can be worn very comfortably crossbody. So I'm going to be going over generally what I think of the bag. I'm going to be going over what can fit inside and also strap length as well so I've recruited my mum again so she's been here modeling the bags and I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm on the taller side at five foot seven and she's on the more petite side at five foot two so hopefully that will be useful to those of you who are either my height or my mum's height so I hope you guys enjoy this and let's get going. So first up is my Louis Vuitton corset bag. I've had this a couple of months now and I've gotten a fair amount of use out of it. And so far so good, I've really been enjoying it. I think of this bag particularly as very much a crossbody bag. You know, you can obviously wear the strap just as a shoulder bag and you can carry it as a top handle. But for me, 99% of the time, I will wear this as a crossbody and I love wearing it like that. It's very light, which really does help. Often crossbody bags, if they're too heavy, can be very uncomfortable. Whereas because this is canvas, it's very light indeed. It's also fairly roomy as well so you can fit a fair amount in there and it does have that beautiful pink lining. The only negative I would really say that I found so far is that it's not that easy to open and close because the way it does is a little clasp right there which is very thin and so if you're just absent-mindedly doing it it can take a few tries to get it in and out which just isn't quite as easy as other bags which you know for example have a magnetic closure like the St. Placide bag but not a big deal, but that is something to keep in mind that it's not a super easy one to get in and out of, but still not a hugely big deal. This one doesn't have an adjustable strap, so you do just have the plain bit of Vachetta leather, which I know some are a fan of, some aren't, so another thing to keep in mind, but so far so good I say I find it very comfortable I find it goes with a lot of things as well I was really surprised it's very easy to dress up or down I think it looks equally nice with both casual outfits and more dressy outfits and this is a very very solid choice if you are looking for something a little bit lighter both in color and in weight So this is everything that can fit in the Louis Vuitton crossset bag. It is a pretty large bag. It's about the fourth largest bag that I have in terms of what I'm talking about in this video. So you can see I have a wallet, I have two card holders, I have a key holder, passport holder, lipstick, a compact, my phone, earphones, a brush and sunglasses as well. Even though I'm not discussing these bags in order of my favorites or anything, I am going to put the ranking of their size order on screen so you can just get an idea about where the bag sits in terms of capacity. Next up is the Chanel Mini in the rectangle size and I'm only including the rectangle size in this video just because I do think of this more as a traditionally crossbody bag because of the longer chain length versus the square mini which does have the shorter chain length and so is more suited to wearing on the shoulder. If you're looking for a very luxury crossbody bag though I do think this is a beautiful choice. It's not one of my most used bags simply because I got it in a more delicate leather in a brighter color which isn't typically what I go for on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll usually pick something which is very durable in a neutral colour. But it's still a very beautiful bag, particularly if you get something that can seamlessly integrate into your everyday wardrobe. It's very functional as well, which I don't necessarily think people would have guessed looking at it, but I really like the functionality of these Chanel minis. The turn lock makes them very easy to get into, but also pretty secure as well. And despite them being very mini size, they do actually hold a fair bit because they are pretty much just one empty space. So. If you pack them well enough, you can definitely fit in all your essentials and then some. 
I will say that it's a very light bag in terms of the actual leather. However, the chain is quite heavy. It's actually much heavier than the bag itself. So that is something to keep in mind. It's also not adjustable. Um, but for me, the biggest issue is the fact that it can be heavier. So if you do overfill the bag, you can sometimes feel the weight a little bit. Never too much of an issue, and I certainly have other bags which are less comfortable, but if you are particularly sensitive to weight on your chain, that is something to think about. That said, I do think it's still a very beautiful choice, and it's perfect if you want something that can dress up and down very easily. The Chanel Rectangle Mini sits in between the Gucci Marmont Mini and the Prada Camera Bag in terms of capacity, so it's a little bit bigger than the Prada Camera Bag, but it's a little bit smaller than the Gucci Marmont Mini, so you can still fit in your essentials, and if you are happy to swap out a kind of medium-sized wallet for, for example, a card holder, you could definitely fit small items in, so you could probably fit in the card holder and then also a pair of sunglasses, or if you did just want to bring a large wallet, you could definitely do that as well and still fit in a key holder, earphones, lipstick and phone. Next up is my Prada Safiano bag. This is the newest addition to my collection. I've only used it a couple of times, so take this mini review with a pinch of salt, but so far, so good. I have been liking it. It is in the Safiano leather, which I'm always 50-50 on. I don't always love the look of it, but at the same time, I can appreciate how durable and carefree it is, which is exactly what I wanted this bag for. I wanted just a very easygoing bag I could use for travel and not worry about damaging. So, so far, it seems pretty good. Obviously, there hasn't been a huge amount of wear and tear with the two times I've used it, but I can tell this kind of leather is going to be pretty carefree. It's definitely not one of the larger bags I own, so this really is just for the essentials. You can fit a phone in, and that's my iPhone 6, um, and a few other essentials, but it isn't going to fit a ton. It is pretty easy to open and close, though. It does have a zipper, which it's smooth, but it's not super easy to open and close. So it's not difficult to get into, but it's not going to be, you know, a super easy turn lock or anything like that. And then you do just have the pocket on the inside and also the car slots, which I really love. So if you wanted to do without a wallet, then you definitely could, and you could just make use of the different compartments there. One plus point of this bag is it does have an adjustable strap, which I know is always very helpful. So if you do find it too long or too short, you can adjust it and make it the perfect strap length for what you want. So. So far, I do really like this. I do think these come in a few different colors, and if you are wanting something very mini, which is going to be very carefree, then I do think this is a good choice so far. The Prada camera bag does have a very similar capacity to the Chanel Mini. It is just a tiny bit smaller, so it can fit the same items. It's just a little bit more of a squeeze. You can still definitely do it, but it's just not quite as roomy. But this is everything I could fit in. So again, still the essentials. You have your wallet, key holder, phone, lipstick, and some earphones. Next up is my Gucci Marmot flap in the small size, and I am also going to include my mini flap as well. This one isn't really specifically a crossbody bag. You can wear it as a crossbody bag, but be aware that if you do that, it will get very pointy at the top, and it will, generally speaking, get quite flat as well. So even though you can, it isn't ideally suited for that. I do love the style in general, and this is one of my most used bags over the past year, particularly in the nude color, which I absolutely love. I think it's a beautiful style. You can wear it through ways as well so if you did want to use it as crossbody you do also have the two options of just on the shoulder and also doubled up as well I will say that because it does have a non adjustable strap it does sit quite a bit lower if you do want to wear it just on the shoulder and the same goes for crossbody although it is a bit more suited to crossbody because bags usually sit higher when you wear them like that and then you do have a fair bit of room this bag is used quite a bit so I have other things in here but there we go. Um, there is a ton of room inside, so it is a very comfortable bag to wear. I get a lot of use out of it. I find it's very easy to match. It goes with a lot of things, but for crossbody, this isn't always the best option. So I will say that the mini size, which I'll talk about next, is more suited to crossbody if you want to wear it like that. And the size difference isn't massive, which again, you'll see later. So even though this is definitely one of my favorites in my overall collection, I would say that it isn't always the best option if you want to wear a crossbody. Thank you. 
and this is everything that fits inside the Gucci Marmon in the small size. It is pretty much the exact same capacity as the Louis Vuitton corset. These are all the same items that I fit into the corset, so the capacity is very similar and it still holds a fair amount as you can see. And as promised, here is my Marmot flap in the mini size. I will say in general, this is much better suited to crossbody wear than the small flap. For a starter, the structure is much more robust and I'm not sure if this is to do exclusively with the size or if it's also the fabric as well, because this is in the velvet. But as you can see, it's just a lot more sturdy if I squeeze it in. Whereas if I do that with my small flap in the leather, it collapses a lot easier, which is why it gets flattened when you wear it crossbody. So if you are looking for something that you can wear crossbody and you do want something from the Marmont line, I say perhaps either look at the Super Mini or have a look at the Mini size because this is very suited to crossbody. I wear it like that all the time and for me it's my favourite way to wear it. I think it's ideally suited for that. I also think that proportionally it does just work a bit better. Sometimes if I wear the small flap crossbody, it can feel a little bit large on my frame, whereas this is much more suited for that, I think. So the functionality in terms of the actual bag is the same. You know, you open it just like so, and you do have that wide open space, and you can still fit a fair amount in here. It's also very comfortable because you do have the leather strap as well as the chain, so you get the dressiness, but you also get the comfort of the leather strap, which is always very helpful when wearing crossbody so definitely would recommend this one if you are looking for a Marmot style to wear a crossbody certainly preferable to the small flap This is everything that fits inside the Gucci Marmot Mini. This one is on the smaller size. This is the fourth smallest bag on this list, um, but it can still fit a fair amount, as you can see, you know, wallet, key holder, passport, phone, sunglasses, etc. Just all the essentials you need. Uh, it's just not quite as large as some of the other flaps on this list. Now for my Chanel boy bag, and I know this isn't a dedicated crossbody bag, but I know lots of ladies do like to wear theirs crossbody, so I thought I would include it in this video. I will say that this isn't my favorite one to wear crossbody. I don't find it that comfortable to wear, partly because of how short the strap length is, and partly because it is a fairly bulky bag for something of this size. It is quite wide here, so it sits quite high out, if that makes sense. Hopefully you'll be able to see what I mean from the modeling shots, but this isn't a natural crossbody choice for me. I will say that it's fairly functional, you know, it's not too difficult to get in and out of. It's not anywhere near as easy as the turn lock, but nothing too troublesome. You just kind of press in there and then open up, and then it is just a big old piece of smooth leather, and then you do just have that empty space. It doesn't fit as much as I would think looking at it. It's not terrible for capacity, but you certainly can't fit absolutely loads. I will say though that the wear and tear, especially for lambskin, has been pretty good. I've had no corner wear and it hasn't gone dented or kind of squished at all, unlike the Gucci Marmot flaps. Um, but again, I will say that this definitely wouldn't be my choice for a crossbody bag. It sits out a bit too much and also is just a little bit too short for crossbody. So I do just prefer to wear it doubled up or on the shoulder. For the capacity of the Chanel Boy bag, it is very similar to the Gucci Marmot flap and the Louis Vuitton corset. It is a tiny bit smaller, so for example, I wasn't able to fit in the extra card holder, but for the most part, I could fit in all the essentials, so I still have wallet, an extra card holder, passport, key holder, lipstick, sunglasses, my phone, compact, and earphones. So still a decent amount, just not quite as roomy as the Gucci Marmot flap, which is just a little bit more flexible. I did also want to mention the chain as well, um, which is something I neglected to talk about in my main review, and it is a very heavy chain. So I did just want to mention that because that does sometimes affect the comfort of wearing it crossbody. And as you can hear, like, it's definitely a substantial one, which should mean that the quality is good, but it doesn't always mean really good things for the comfort of the bag. 
Next up is my Gucci Soho. This is probably one of my oldest crossbody bags I have. I wasn't really into crossbody bags before I owned this and it kind of changed my opinion. So I'm a big fan of this bag. It doesn't get a lot of use now just because I do have other bags such as my Celine Nano, which I will also talk about in a minute, but it still is very functional for what it is. And this is an incredibly popular bag. And I absolutely understand why it's very functional for a camera bag. So for a start, it's very light. So it is very comfortable to wear. You do have an adjustable strap. One little annoyance to me is that I do have this extra bit of material which has just always been wonky and it just never seems to want to play ball. I mean, I try to train it, but it just doesn't happen. So that's an annoyance for me personally. I don't think they all do that. It's just mine for some reason. Um, but in general, I will say this is a very, very functional bag. It's lightweight, as I said, but it can also fit an absolute ton. So if you're looking for something that's good as an everyday bag or a travel bag, this is a really nice choice. It is a big wide open space, but you do have two pockets here. So you do have the added advantage of compartments, but honestly you can fit in just all your essentials and then some, it really can fit in a lot. I just flipped myself with a tassel. It's also a pretty smooth zipper, so it's fairly easy to get in and out of, and you do have the adjustable strap as well. And just generally, this is a very, very comfortable strap. The only negative I would say is that over time it does have a habit of doing this, which is caving in, so you do need to keep it stuffed. When I keep it stuffed, it looks all good, but as soon as I take things out, this happens. So that is one to keep in mind, but the pebbled leather, apart from that, is very durable. I've not had any issues, and I don't think I've had wear and tear, which is too bad at all. So overall, I would still rate this very highly. Again, I don't get a lot of use out of it anymore, but that isn't to take away from the bag. It is very functional, and it's very fit for purpose if you do want a casual crossbody. This is everything that fits inside the Gucci Soho. This is the second largest bag that I'm talking about today. It's very roomy. You can fit all the essentials and then some. I still have wallet, extra card holders, passport sunglasses, cream, phone, just everything that you need. It could fit a lot. And I've also fit in a small umbrella in here before as well. And that fits just fine as well. Next up is my Celine Nano, which if you follow my channel regularly, you'll probably know what a huge fan of this bag I am. I did a review on it very recently, so I'm gonna keep this brief, but this is a really nice choice if you want a mini bag, which still holds an absolute ton. The capacity is really one of the main selling features of this bag because it fits so much. It's incredible. It is just a wide open space. You do have one pocket there, but it's not very easily accessible. So if you like compartments, this bag probably isn't for you, but if you like to carry a lot, then this is a very nice choice. Another thing I love about this bag is that you can definitely wear it crossbody, but you can also wear it very comfortably other ways. I think it looks great and is very comfortable every which way. So it's great on the shoulder, it's great crossbody, but it's also very cute and easy to wear just grabbing the top handle as well. The wear and tear is also amazing on this bag. I've had it a year and a half and there's pretty much no wear and tear to speak of. So it's very easy and convenient to just grab and go. This bag is the main reason why I don't use my Gucci Soho that much because this bag does everything that the Gucci Soho does. But it's also more versatile in the sense that it can easily be dressed up or down, whereas I find the Gucci Soho is much more of a casual bag. So I'm a huge fan of it. It is more on the pricey side, so if you can get a good deal on it pre-loved, I would definitely recommend doing so. But generally, I absolutely love this bag and I think it's a great crossbody choice. So this is everything that fits in the Celine Nano. As you can see, it's quite a lot. This is by far the largest bag that I'm talking about here today. So I have my passport, I have hand cream, a phone, earphones, wallet, sunglasses, two card holders, a compact lipstick, hairbrush, key holder, and also a facial spray. Obviously not all of these things are essential. I probably wouldn't carry three different places to hold my cards. I don't usually carry a facial spray with me, um, but this gives you an idea of how much capacity this bag actually has. It's extremely roomy and could fit a ton of stuff. 
And now for another fairly new addition to my collection, it is the Louis Vuitton Saint Placide bag. I have been loving this bag so far. It goes with a surprising amount of things. I was worried I wouldn't be able to pair it that well because I don't really wear a lot of brown or tan things, but I found this to be very versatile and it goes really well with jeans, I find. It's also very easy to access, which I think is my favorite thing about it. It does just open and close with a magnetic closure and it's very strong, so it's pretty secure, but it's so easy to open and just grab what you need out of it. You do have one zipper compartment and then also a pocket. I tend to just use the main section here. You can see there's some stuff inside already. Um, but for me, it's very easy to access and very easy to use. The only thing I would say though is it's probably not the best one if you are looking exclusively for a crossbody bag, mainly because it is quite heavy. It isn't really the chain that's heavy either. It's not a super light chain, but it's definitely not overwhelmingly heavy like the Chanel Boy, for example. But the overall bag isn't a particularly light one. I'm not sure why, because there is a lot of canvas, so technically that should mean it is very light, but I guess because there's more hardware, more leather involved, it isn't the lightest bag, and because of that, it isn't always that comfortable to wear crossbody. I have worn it crossbody, and I will still wear it like that, but I can't do that if I have a ton of stuff inside and if I'm out for a long day shopping. I just don't find it that comfortable to wear, especially as even though you do have a little leather strap here, it can very easily get twisted and you'll end up just having the chain bit on your shoulder and that can dig in. So even though I do really like this bag, it isn't necessarily a great one for crossbody if you want to use it exclusively as that. The St. Placide bag is also very roomy. It's, I'd say, the third largest out of the ones I'm talking about today. It pretty much has the same capacity as the Gucci Soho Disco. The only difference is it's a tiny bit more of a squeeze to fit everything I did into the Gucci Soho, um, but you can do it if you wanted to. So near enough, it has the same capacity as the Gucci Soho, and as you can see, it can fit a fair amount. And finally, the very last crossbody that I'm going to discuss is the Saint Laurent Cape Bag. I have mixed opinions on this one. There are definitely pros and cons to it. So in terms of the pros, I think it's a beautiful bag and it's still one of my go-to evening bags just because I love the way it looks so much. I love the jewelry fact of it and I think it's absolutely stunning. It's also fairly comfortable to wear as well. You do have this leather strap right here. And even though it's not very thick, it is still very comfortable. And also because it's a fixed chain, it doesn't tend to move around and slide so you don't ever get the chain bit digging in, which I love. It is also very easy to access. It does open with a button closure, which is magnetic as well, so it does just tend to snap into place very easily. In terms of the negatives, one, it doesn't fit very much. So this is definitely a wallet on a chain in the sense that you can really only carry the bare essentials. You have some car slots right here. You have some space for, you know, your phone, keys, and maybe a lipstick, but really that's pretty much it. I would also say that the leather is a little bit more high maintenance than other styles. So because it does have the black smooth leather, you do have to keep on top of just wiping it clean because it will attract just fingerprints and if you have any makeup on your hands it will show up so I do find myself having to give it a quick wipe every now and then but in terms of actual kind of scratches or anything like that it hasn't been too bad so overall I definitely don't think this is a bad choice if you do want something that is very jewelry like or a nice statement clutch then it is a beautiful option you just have to be aware that one it doesn't fit very much and two it isn't the most durable bag in the world. The St. Laurent Cape bag is by far the smallest bag on this list. You can really only fit in the very bare essentials. So I could only fit my phone, lipstick, key holder, and card holder. And even then it was a bit of a squeeze, but you do have all the various compartments as well inside. So you don't really need a card holder. So you can definitely forego this and just bring, if you wanted to, your key holder if you had one, lipstick and phone. And then there is room for cash as well. 
And then finally to wrap up this video, I thought I would do a quick overview of what my favourite crossbody bags are to wear and what are my least favourites. So in my favourites category, I have four bags that I wanted to call out. The first one is the Louis Vuitton Crossette bag, which as I mentioned before, I do find to be very functional. It's very lightweight, it can fit a lot. I love the look of it, I find it to be very versatile. And I also find it to be very, very comfortable to wear. So for me, this kind of ticks all the boxes. I really do enjoy it and I been getting a lot of use out of it. My next choice is my Celine Nano, which probably won't come as a surprise to many of you, but again, this is just the ultimate go anywhere carefree bag. It's great for travel, equally great for going out to dinner, and everything in between pretty much. It fits a ton, very durable, and I just can't say enough good things. So absolutely love this one, would highly recommend. And then here is more of a surprise one, but I am picking my Chanel Rectangle Mini because if you do want something that's on the fancier side, which is exclusively crossbody, I think this is a really hard one to beat. The functionality is great because of the turn lock and how easy access it is. It can fit a surprising amount for a bag this size, and it also is still fairly comfortable to wear as well, and you do of course get that very iconic Chanel look. So even though I don't reach for this a ton, if you do want a very luxury crossbody bag, this is a really great one. And then finally, I also wanted to call out my Gucci Marmont mini flap, definitely in the mini flap size rather than the small flap size, just because I don't think the small flap is intended to be a crossbody, whereas this is much more suited to that. I think in general, the size is also more suitable. It just sits a bit nicer, and the overall structure does lend itself more to being a crossbody bag. You don't lose too much in terms of capacity by downsizing either, and overall, I'm just a huge fan of the look of this bag. So I will say that the velvet is definitely more high maintenance so you may want to look at other fabrics or leathers um, but I'm still very pleased with my purchase and I do think it's a very nice choice if you are looking for a crossbody bag in this kind of style. And now for my pick of the bags which make for the worst crossbody bags. These aren't necessarily judgments on the bags in general, but I'm specifically commenting on how good they are as a crossbody bag. So first up is my Louis Vuitton Saint Placide bag, which I am a huge fan of. I do really like the bag, but it doesn't make for the most comfortable crossbody. I can and do still wear it crossbody, but if you want something exclusively for that purpose, you can definitely do better than this one. As I mentioned, it's not always that comfortable because you only get a little bit of leather and it can kind of swing around and dig it into your shoulder and it is a little bit on the heavier side. So even though I love it more as a doubled up bag, it isn't so great for crossbody use. My next choice is my Chanel Boy bag. I just don't think this is very suited to crossbody use, at least on me personally. I do find it's a little bit bulky just because of how thick it is. It also sits a little bit too high, and because the chain is so heavy, it doesn't make for the most comfortable crossbody experience. So even though it's a beautiful bag, it isn't that suitable for crossbody in my opinion. And for my very last pick, I have my Gucci Mormon in the small size. Unlike its mini counterpart, I don't think this is that suitable for crossbody use. As I mentioned, it does get very squished and it gets very pointed at the top if you do wear it crossbody for extended periods of time. And also I do just find it looks a little bit too big crossbody as well, just because of the overall size. So it is still fairly comfortable to wear, but this wouldn't be my go-to if I wanted a crossbody bag for that day. I'd be much more likely to pick one of my other choices. So that is it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed it and you found it useful. If I missed anything out, if you want to know anything extra, then leave me a comment down below and I will try and get back to you. And if you did enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I would love to have you here. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.